Today we're going to explore something called the logarithmic mean and we're going to see where it fits in the greater inequality of all means. But before we get going I'd like to point out that I learned about this from Mathematics Magazine, an issue in 1987 and the article was by Frank Burke. That being said, he goes a, quite a bit further into his discussion about this logarithmic mean inequality than we will. So before we get started, I'd like to recall the arithmetic geometric mean inequality that says for all positive real numbers, A and B, the geometric mean is less than or equal to the arithmetic mean. In other words, the square root of A times B is less than or equal to A plus B over two. And we'll maybe derive this real quick just for completeness. So let's start over here on the left hand side. So that's the square root of A times B. And then I'm gonna write this as the square root of four times A times B over two. So essentially I just multiplied by two over two. I just brought one of those twos into the square root. Okay. So next up, I'm going to add something inside of the square root, which is most definitely bigger than or equal to zero. And that's where I start building my inequality. So that means I need to make my square root a little bit bigger. So now we'll have 4ab plus a minus b quantity squared. And then this is all over two. So how do I know that's bigger than or equal to zero and thus the inequality is going in the correct direction? Well, it's because it's something squared. And if we're working with real numbers, that's kind of clearly bigger than or equal to zero. So now we can expand out what's happening under this radical and we'll see that we get 4ab plus a squared minus 2ab plus b squared over, well, we've got all that over square root of two. And this is equality now. But notice that we can take this 4ab and switch this minus to a plus, at which point we can factor what's going on in here. So we've got a plus b quantity squared over 2, but then that pretty clearly gives us a plus b over 2 as needed. Furthermore, let's notice that the inequality only occurred at this step right here. And in fact, if we have A equals B, we get equality. So that's what we'll put here. So equality, if and only if A equals B. So now looking at this right here, we've got geometric mean less than or equal to arithmetic mean. That motivates the following question. And in order to like write that down, let's rewrite this inequality. So A plus B over two. And that question, is there something like a mean that fits in between here? So we'll call it an in-between mean. Great. Now there is something called the harmonic mean. Now there's another well-known mean called the harmonic mean. Maybe I'll put this over here as HM but it's well known to be on the left of the geometric mean. So what we really want is something in between here. And that's where we introduce this thing called the logarithmic mean. So I'll just call it the log mean for short. And it's gonna require A and B to be positive, but we're also gonna take A to be less than B just, just for the interest of simplicity. Okay, so the logarithmic mean here turns out to be b minus a over the natural log of b minus the natural log of a. That's kind of the correct way to define this logarithmic mean. Now, before we put this into our inequality and show that this object lies between these two, let's maybe look at the following question. So what about the case when b is equal to a. So that case clearly doesn't make sense like by the definition of this logarithmic mean. But you know, it does make sense uh, with respect to the arithmetic and the geometric mean. And if you take the arithmetic and the geometric mean of, well, a number with itself, you just retrieve that number. That's because a plus a over two is equal to a, 
And when a is positive, a times a, and then taking the square root also gives us a. So we should probably have some interpretation of this object right here when b is equal to a. And how would we do that? Well, the answer is with limits. So we'll define the logarithmic mean of a with itself. In other words, a minus a over natural log of a minus natural log of a to be equal to the limit as x goes to a of x minus a over the natural log of x minus the natural log of a. But now notice that we can calculate that using L'Hopital's rule because it's an indeterminate form at the moment, so we need some sort of trick. So using L'Hopital's rule, that'll give us the limit as x goes to a of one over one over x, but that's clearly gonna be equal to a because it's just one over one over a. Okay, so this is good. The logarithmic mean at least behaves like a normal mean. And what I mean by that is that if you take the average or the mean of a number with itself, you should get itself back. And that is what we retrieve here. Okay, so now I think it's time to prove the inequality in question. So let's get that on the board and get going. Now we're ready for the main goal of the video. And that is to prove, well, the arithmetic logarithmic geometric mean inequality. And it says for all real numbers a and b that are both positive and a is less than b, we have the square root of ab is less than or equal to b minus a over natural log of b minus natural log of a, which in turn is less than or equal to a plus b over two. And we're gonna do this by comparing three areas that are kind of obviously in the correct order. And the first one is the area under the curve y equals e to the x between natural log of a and natural log of b. And now, since e to the x is something called a convex function, in other words, it's concave up, we know that every secant segment will lie above the graph. That's what we've got going on right here. So if we create a trapezoid as such, we know that the area of this trapezoid will be, well, bigger than the area of the stuff under the curve. And furthermore, for the same convexity argument, we know that if we take a tangent line anywhere on this graph, it'll lie completely below the curve. So if we make a trapezoid with the same base out of that tangent line, we'll get something that is smaller than the area of that region. And that's what we've done here. And so we could summarize that with the following picture. So the area of the magenta trapezoid is less than or equal to the area under the curve, which in turn is less than or equal to the area of the blue trapezoid. And now all that's left is to calculate all of those areas. Maybe we'll start with the area under the curve because that's the easiest. Notice that is simply the integral from the natural log of a to the natural log of b of e to the x dx. But that's simply gonna be e to the x evaluated from natural log of a to natural log of b, but the natural log is really defined to be the inverse of the exponential function. So this simply gives us b minus a. Okay, good. Then maybe let's move on to the blue area. So the area of, like I said, this blue trapezoid. So let's get a picture of that in here. So that's gonna be one half well, let's see, the sum of the two heights, so I'm just kind of recalling the area of a trapezoid formula. So the sum of the two heights, but that's pretty easy to calculate. Natural log of b evaluated at e to the x is b, and natural log of a evaluated there is a. So the sum of those two heights will be a plus b. And then we'll have the base. So the base will be that difference there, natural log of b minus natural log of a. So there we've got that. So natural log of B minus natural log of A. Okay, so there we have it. There's the area of that trapezoid. And now all that's left is to find the area of the magenta trapezoid. So let's get our little mock-up of that on the board right here. Okay, cool. So again, it's gonna be half the sum of these two heights, but the sum of those two heights is a little bit trickier. And that's because we need the tangent line here. 
So let's perhaps do that calculation over in this box. So we need the, like I said, the equation of the tangent at, well, what will it be? It'll be x equals, well, natural log of a plus natural log of b over two. So I'll maybe write that as one half natural log of a plus one half natural log of b. You could most definitely simplify that using logarithm rules, but we won't do that here. Okay, so let's calculate the slope first. So in order to calculate the slope, we need the derivative. So notice the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x. And we evaluate that at x equals, well, that stuff right there. I'll just put a box there. And what you'll get after using um, some logarithm rules will be the square root of a times b. And then furthermore, the point, well, it'll have the x-coordinate as given, and then the y-coordinate, well, that'll be another square root of a times b for the same reason as the slope. So that means we've got half natural log of a plus half natural log of b, and then comma square root of a b. So putting this all together and then moving some things around, we'll get the following equation of the tangent line. So we can in fact factor a square root of a times b out of the whole thing. And then we'll have x plus one and then minus half natural log of a minus half natural log of b. Okay, so let's go over here and look at what we really need. So we're gonna need this distance right here, I'll call this h sub one, and we're gonna need this distance right here, I'll call this h sub two. So let's calculate those over here, maybe in this orange box that I'm building. So to calculate h sub one, we need to know where this tangent line, well, it intersects the vertical line x equals natural log of a and it'll be the corresponding y coordinate. So if you take this and you plug in x equals, like I said, the natural log of a, what will you get? Well, we'll have the square root of a, b, and then well, natural log of a minus half natural log of a will give us a positive half natural log of a. So we have one plus half natural log of a minus half natural log of b. And then likewise, we need to calculate this h2. Oh, but what is this h2? Well, it's simply the intersection of this tangent line with the vertical line natural log of b, x equals natural log of b. In other words, it's the y part that we get by plugging in x equals natural log of b here. And kind of by symmetry, we can see that that's gonna be the square root of a, b, and then one minus half natural log of a plus half natural log of b. Okay, good. Now we're ready to calculate this area right here. So let's recall it's gonna be a half h1 plus h2. So in other words, the average of the two heights here times the base. So notice the base is the difference in natural log of a and natural log of b. So let's write that down. So ln b minus ln a. Oh, but notice half h1 plus h2, well, the half can just stay out front, and h1 plus h2 simplifies pretty easily. How does it simplify? Well, notice that this term will cancel with this term, and this term will cancel with this term, simply giving us two times the square root of a, b. So combined with that half, we'll get just square root of a, b. So there we have it, square root of a, b, the natural log of b minus natural log of a. Okay, so now let's get these areas we calculated up into this inequality and see what we get. So that magenta area was square root of a, b times natural log of b minus natural log of a. The area of the green region was simply b minus a. So let's get that right there. So B minus A. Oh, and then the area of the blue region, well, it was this thing right here. So let's write that down. So we'll have A plus B over two times natural log of B minus natural log of A. But now notice that we're home free. We can simply divide that whole inequality 
by log B minus log A and we'll get exactly what we need. So there's where the logarithmic mean fits in with the arithmetic and the geometric mean. So thanks for sticking around if you're still around. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, maybe consider doing so, it would really help us out. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.